Ladies and gentlemen, there is, it is important to have understanding of what is going on during asphyxia. But the type of asphyxia we mostly encounter in our neonates is not the type of asphyxia which we can mimic in the laboratory. So we rely on, lim on animal research. And what I want to do with you is go through the graph, which is in your documentation, which has been created by um, research done in the 60s of last century. And because of ethical reason, this type of studies are not done anymore. Uh, but you will, uh, you will see why that is when I talk to you about how this graph was created. What had been done? So, what they did, they did um, in near-term monkeys, they did a C-section. And bef before they let their babies be born, they put in a catheter in the umbilical artery to measure blood pressure and to measure heart rate and be able to take blood samples. Then they did a, a probe into the esophagus to measure respiration rate, temperature. Next they placed a hood of lukewarm water around the head. That was to prevent air coming into the lungs when the, when the baboon, or I could say the baby, was born. When everything had been done, they cut the umbilical cord. So this is acute, acute, acute asphyxia. More acute than what we encounter in abruptio of the placenta. So we have to keep that in mind. This is not the type of asphyxia we usually encounter. So when this is the moment that the baboon is born, we see that after birth, when I look at the upper line, there will be a few gasps. And for you, those of you who never saw a gasp, I will try to demonstrate what a gasp looks like. It is an, an attempt to breathe of low frequency, and as I said, attempt breath, so no air will come in, and it's irregular. So it more or less goes like this. I hope I made a good show. And then the gasp stop. And then we have what we call the primary apnea. Next, then there will be next gasps. And when nothing is done, they will cease and the baby will die. So this will be the secondary apnea. On the next line, we see heart rate. First, the heart rate is going up a little bit, and that is because of the surge of adrenaline. But then, because of, there is no oxygen coming into the system, because there is no, bre no breath, there is no oxygen coming in, heart rate will drop and drop and drop and drop. As well will the blood, will the, the blood pressure. So at this area, in this point in time, which is approximately 10 minutes, it says there's brain damage. And this line shouldn't be there because if it continues, the brain damage, of course, will get more and more and more. So in acute, acute asphyxia, we have only 10 minutes to act upon it and to resuscitate the baby. Now let as look, so this was respiration, heart rate, and what happens with metabolism? At this, when we start off, the pH is approximately 7.35, and the carbon dioxide pressure is approximately 45. And after 10 minutes, you can see and go a graph, the pH has gone down to 6.8, whereas the PCO2 has gone up to 150. So, 
If I now would ask you what kind of acidosis we do have down here, you would be tempted to say, well, probably this is a respiratory acidosis. But you have to keep in mind what happens when we don't have oxygen into the system. Glucose doesn't break down to CO2 and water, and thus yielding energy, ATP, but it breaks down to lactate. So we have a high PCO2, and we have an enormous increase in lactate. So down here we have a mixed acidosis. We have to keep that in mind because this acidosis might be influencing the clinical picture later on. So this is about metabolism. What I did not show in this graph so far was what is shown in, in, in the graph in your documentation, whereas it says here, resuscitation. And what you can see, if you resuscitate, that means you ventilate the baby and you bring in oxygen into the system, that because there is oxygen from going from the lungs to the heart, heart rate will increase very rapidly. And that is an important sign, because if you are resuscitating a baby and the heart rate is good, you're doing a good job. Keep going on. However, if the heart rate, rate is low, then you have to go over your resuscitation efforts as well. Is the position well? Is there no, nothing blocking the airways? Is the bag and mask, is it well, well performed, etc.? You have to go through that. And if so, if it helps, if there is adequate resuscitation, there will be an increase in heart rate. It shouldn't go down, but it should be kept high. So there's an increase in heart rate, which means you're doing a fine job. Now, if we would come to the take-home message, what should you remember about asphyxia? First of all, that this type of research is not completely showing what goes on in a human newborn infant. So that's number one. However, it offers some knowledge. And the first one to remember is that when you resuscitate a baby and oxygen, oxygen comes in the lungs and flows from lungs to heart, there will be an immediate increase in heart rate. So if the heart rate in resuscitation is normal, you're doing a fine job. That's number two. Number three is that what I mentioned about the metabolism, we will have a acidosis with a high PCO2 and a high lactic acid. And this will lead, perhaps lead, when the baby is doing well afterwards, to a picture where we have a baby with grunting, with tachypnea, but that is not the respiratory distress of disease, but is the respiratory distress of overcoming the acidosis. You have to keep that in mind. Thank you.